in the heart of a foreboding swamp, distant from civilization and shrouded in the cloak of darkness, lies a house that seems frozen in time. This is the home of the Shadow Guardians, a place where daylight dares not enter and where night stretches into an endless void. For generations, this family has practiced an art as ancient as it is horrifying, voodoo. But not just any voodoo, a dark, malevolent voodoo, capable of binding the souls of the unwary and the curious within a prison without walls. The house is a labyrinth of twisted corridors and hidden rooms, each holding a piece of the sinister puzzle assembled over centuries. And at the heart of it all, there's a key. Not just any key, but the key of darkness, forged in the flames of blasphemous rituals and soaked in the blood of innocence. It is the key that unlocks the door to the secret room where souls are bound and fates are sealed. Now, a new victim has arrived. A young woman named Claire, oblivious to the fate awaiting her, has crossed the threshold of this cursed abode. And as the Shadow Guardians welcome her with deceitful smiles, the key of darkness begins to quiver, as if thirsting. Thirsting for another soul to bind, another fate to seal. If you dare to continue, know that what lies ahead is a journey into the heart of darkness, where every corner may hide a deadly peril, and every shadow could be the last thing you see. For once the key of darkness turns, there is no going back, and the terror is just beginning. Are you ready? Then enter if you dare. But remember, the door you open might be your last. Chapter 1 The Arrival The sky was cloaked in leaden clouds, as if nature itself wished to partake in our sinister ritual. Claire, the young woman who had responded to our advertisement, arrived in a worn-out car, parking beside the ancient stone fountain that graced the courtyard of our abode. Her hands trembled slightly as she turned off the engine, perhaps a harbinger of the horror that awaited her. Welcome, Claire, greeted Eleanor, the family's matriarch, with a smile that concealed decades of secrets. We're glad you're here. Claire returned the smile unaware that each step she took inside the house brought her closer to the trap we had meticulously prepared for her. The facade of the dwelling was a masterpiece of Victorian architecture, with intricate details masking voodoo symbols. But Claire couldn't know that. Not yet. We led her around the house, showing her the tastefully furnished rooms portraits of our ancestors hanging on the walls and the library brimming with ancient tomes of magic and alchemy. Everything seemed perfect, an oasis of culture and sophistication. This will be your room, Eleanor said, opening the door to a cozy but modest chamber. I hope you find yourself comfortable with us. Claire nodded, placing her bag on the bed and casting a quick glance around the room. It was all so normal, so deceptively normal. If you need anything, I'm here, Eleanor said, closing the door behind her. But Claire felt a different energy in the air, an invisible weight that seemed to press down on her. Driven by a curiosity she couldn't contain, she began to explore the room. And then she saw it. A small wooden chest almost hidden in a corner of the wardrobe. She opened it and found an ancient key made of a dark metal corroded by time. The key seemed to call out to her as if it had a life of its own. Claire picked it up, feeling a chilling shiver run down her spine. With the key clutched in her hands, Claire heard a whisper, almost imperceptible, that seemed to emanate from the key itself. Find the lock. Free the souls. And in that moment, Claire understood that this key was not just a piece of metal. It was an invitation, or perhaps a challenge. 
a challenge that, if accepted, could forever change not only her fate, but the very balance between the world of the living and that of the spirits. And so, as the night enveloped the abode of the Shadow Guardians in a cloak of darkness, Claire armed herself with courage. She was determined to find the lock that the key would open, unaware that she was about to cross a threshold from which there is no return. The ritual could finally begin anew, and the terror was just the beginning. Chapter 2 The Discovery The night had fully descended when Claire decided to explore the mansion. The ancient key, now hidden in the pocket of her nightgown, seemed to pulsate, as if connected to some invisible force driving her to search. Lighting a candle, she began to walk along the dark corridors, the wooden floor creaking under her steps, as if protesting every inch she advanced. As she explored, she noticed details that had eluded her during the day. Strange symbols carved beneath the paintings. Small voodoo deity statuettes hidden behind books in the library. And black candles placed seemingly at random, but which she knew held a deeper meaning. Each new discovery heightened her anxiety, yet curiosity propelled her forward. Finally, she arrived at the basement. A heavy wooden door, worn by time, stood before her. She pulled out the key from her pocket and inserted it into the lock. A shiver ran down her spine as the key turned with a sinister click, almost as if the door itself knew it had been opened by that key and no other. The door groaned open, revealing a room that seemed a sanctuary dedicated to darkness. Dark relics and artifacts were arranged on wooden shelves. Human skulls, amulets engraved with incomprehensible symbols, and at the center an altar on which lay an ancient book, covered in dust and candle wax. Claire felt a wave of pure terror as she entered the room, but it was as if an external force was guiding her, compelling her to proceed. She approached the altar and flipped through the book. The pages were filled with voodoo spells and rituals, and as she read, she understood the horror of the situation. This room was the beating heart of the house. The place where souls were bound and fate sealed. And now, she was caught in that web of evil. But before she could fully comprehend the gravity of her discovery, she heard footsteps from the corridor. Someone was approaching. Claire quickly blew out the candle and hid behind a heavy velvet curtain, her heart pounding wildly. The basement door slowly opened and a hooded figure entered the room, carrying a tray with new artifacts. Claire held her breath, praying her presence would go undetected. The figure placed the tray on the altar and began to chant a spell in an ancient, unknown language. Claire felt the air grow heavier as if the room was responding to the invocation. Then, without warning, the figure stopped, as if sensing something. Who's there? it murmured, the voice trembling with an indecipherable emotion. Claire knew she had to act. With a swift movement, she grabbed the nearest object and hurled it at the figure, striking it and causing it to stagger backward. Seizing the moment of confusion, Claire darted out from her hiding place and ran towards the door, locking it behind her. As she ascended the stairs, the weight of realization hit her like a punch in the stomach. She wasn't just a prisoner in that house. She had become a pawn in a game far more terrifying than she could have ever imagined. And as she took refuge in her room, a question crossed her mind a question that would keep her awake for many nights to come. Was there truly a way out of this labyrinth of terror? This was only the beginning, and Claire knew that the night was still long. Chapter 3 The Ritual The night was darker than ever. 
as if even the moon feared to illuminate our dwelling. We, the Shadow Guardians, were ready. The ritual room had been meticulously prepared. A circle of sea salt inscribed with voodoo symbols surrounded the altar, and black candles were arranged in an intricate geometric pattern. Every detail was calculated to maximize the power of the spell we were about to cast. While Claire was still trapped in her room, unaware of the fate that awaited her, we began our ritual. With trembling but resolute hands, we carved additional symbols into the wooden floor, while the black wax of the candles dripped like dark tears. Then, raising our hands to the sky, we began to chant the spell in a language known only to us, invoking the dark spirits that had granted our family the power to bind souls. But just as the ritual was reaching its climax, the door burst open. It was Mark, a family member who had always shown signs of weakness and remorse. We can't continue to do this, he exclaimed, his eyes filled with despair. Without hesitation, I grabbed a ritualistic knife from the table beside me and stabbed him in the heart. Mark let out a muffled scream as his body collapsed to the ground, his eyes still open in an expression of horror and disbelief. Your soul is now bound, as all the others before you, I whispered as his spirit was absorbed by one of the grotesque artifacts adorning the room. With Mark's death, the ritual was now complete. We felt a surge of power flow through us, invigorating every fiber of our being. Now, we were ready for Claire. After intense hours, the ritual concluded, and just as we were about to leave the room, a dull noise came from upstairs. Then a voice, weak but clear, echoed through an ancient communication device, that only we knew existed in the house. It was Mark's voice. Claire, listen to me. I know how to stop them. You must. The message abruptly cut off, but the damage was done. Claire had found a way to communicate with the spirit of our slain family member. How was this possible? Had she perhaps read one of our secret tomes? Now. Claire knew, knew there was a way to stop us. As we looked at each other, understanding the gravity of the situation, a terrible realization hit us. The hunt had just begun, and the prey now knew how to become a hunter. And so, as the house remained enveloped in darkness, we knew that a terrible struggle was about to begin. A struggle not only for the souls we had bound, but also for Claire's soul, and perhaps, just perhaps, for the soul of our very family. The terror was just beginning, and the night was far from over. Chapter 4 The Trap The silence was almost palpable broken only by the ticking of an ancient grandfather clock, seemingly counting down the remaining seconds of Claire's life. The young woman, her heart pounding in her throat, found herself in the library of our mansion, a place we had deliberately avoided showing her. Here, amidst volumes of forbidden texts and ancient manuscripts, she had discovered a book detailing our nefarious plan. Her hands trembled as she flipped through the pages, each word etched like a dagger in her heart. I must get out of here, she thought, closing the book with a dull thud. But the house now under our control had other plans for her. Claire stood up, determined to escape, but the moment she laid her hand on the main door's handle, the door that would lead outside our mansion, the one that could have led Claire to salvation, it recoiled as if alive, merging with the surrounding wood. The windows followed suit, their glass turning as solid as walls. She was trapped. Just as despair was about to overwhelm her, an ethereal whisper reached her ear. Claire, listen carefully, said the voice of Mark. 
our family member whom we had brutally slain. There is a way to stop them, but you must be swift and precise. Claire's heart skipped a beat. There was a glimmer of hope, a chance to turn the tables. Mark revealed a spell that could nullify our power, but to do so, she had to reach the ritual room and recite it before we completed our malevolent design. I'll be with you, Claire. You won't be alone, concluded Mark, his voice fading like a gentle breeze. Claire steeled herself. It was time to act, to become the hunter in a house of predators. With her heart throbbing with terror and determination, she prepared to undertake the most perilous journey of her life, armed only with the knowledge Mark had provided. And as Claire approached the secret door leading to the ritual room, we, oblivious to the impending danger, continued our preparations for the final ritual. But one thing was certain. That night, our mansion would witness an epic showdown, a battle for Claire's very soul and, perhaps, the future of the Shadow Guardians. Chapter 5 The Showdown Clara's heart pounded like a war drum as she approached the ritual room. Each step was an act of rebellion, each breath a defiance of our power. She had memorized the spell Mark had whispered to her, repeating it in her mind like a mantra. The door to the ritual room was ajar, a slit in reality emitting an aura of pure evil. Clara took a deep breath and flung the door open, bursting into the room with fierce determination. It's too late, Clara. We hissed, our faces twisted in a malevolent smile. The ritual is complete. But Clara refused to give up. With a desperate cry, she began reciting the spell Mark had taught her. The words thundered through the room, shaking the black candles and the symbols etched on the floor. But just as Clara was about to complete the spell, a supernatural scream filled the room. Her cries turned to a silent whisper, her voice choked by an invisible force. Her body fell to the ground and lifeless as her soul was sucked into one of the vials on the secret room shelf. We had won. Her soul was now bound, a trophy in our eternal collection of victims. Welcome, Clara, we murmured, gazing at the vial. Now, containing her essence, you are part of our family now, forever. The ritual room, filled with an even denser darkness, as if the entire universe recognized our triumph. We had bound another soul, and our power had reached new heights. As we reveled in our triumph, a sense of unease overcame us. Mark, our slain kin, appeared before us like a specter. You haven't won, he said, his voice a mix of anger and despair. Others will come. Your end is near. And as his image faded, a letter appeared inside the ritual circle. The message read, Another curious soul is seeking work as a nurse. We smiled, but it was a tense smile cracked by Mark's warning. The key of darkness is ready to turn again, but this time a question pierced our minds. Who will be next? Will they free the souls we've bound, including Clara's? Our mansion is an abyss of darkness, a labyrinth of terror stretching beyond the bounds of reality. Every soul we trap is a step toward immortality, a piece in the mosaic of our immeasurable power. And as the key of darkness continues to turn, sealing the fate of anyone daring to cross our threshold, we know the cycle will never end. The letter on our table is a reminder that our future is already written in the blood and tears of past and future victims, and you, dear listener, might be next. Don't miss the next tale of terror. Subscribe now if you dare. 
The terror has only just begun, but remember, once the key of darkness turns, there is no going back.